Welcome, welcome everyone to a casted game of Age of Empires 4. And today, spawning in the north corner of the map, playing in orange, we have got Beastie Cutie playing as the IU Bids and his opponent in the south, playing in yellow. We've got Valdemar playing as the Byzantines. Welcome, welcome everyone to Dry Arabia. That is your map for today on the Japanese Springs biome. Boy, oh boy, does it look good. An absolute sight to behold. And ladies and gents, we are on, of course, the Sultan's DLC with two brand new civilizations showcased today. The Byzantines and the IU bids can be a fantastic matchup with two great players in Age of Empires 4, Beastie QT and Valdemar. Let's talk a bit about the IU bids. A variant civilization, a sub faction, if you will, for the Abbasid dynasty. They have the House of Wisdom, which is very familiar, but uh, they do have a little bit of a difference with them. Whilst it looks the same, well, the Golden Age is very different. Take a look at this. It's got five tiers to the Golden Age, and each level gives you something a little bit special. But what I love about this is that it's only taking 10 structures to uh, get to the next tier for the first tiers, and then and then 20, and then and 25. But it makes the flow of the eco bonus a lot stronger, a lot smoother. If you compare this to the Abbasid Dynasty, take a look at that. That's the Golden Age tiers, three tiers for the Abbasid Dynasties on the left. And the thing is, is that it takes quite a while for that tier two to come in. And it takes even longer for that tier 3. It just feels like there's a massive gap in between those tiers. And whilst you do have a bigger boost, it just feels a lot smoother for the way that the IU bids have it. But that's just one of, well, I guess several changes or differences between the IU bids and the Abbasid Dynasty. The other change or difference, I'd say, is, of course, the landmark. Now, you do have still have the four wings, but each wing gives you two options. Now, you can only choose one wing at a time when you age up. And it gives you a choice to be made. So if you go for the eco wing, you can either choose growth or industry. But in any game, you can only choose one of the two, right? So if you choose growth, then you can no longer choose industry and vice versa. So we'll have to see in a short while what Beastie decides to do. It does mean that there's a lot of flexibility with this civilization and the sub faction. So what I kind of one of the reasons I quite like it, to be honest. Like, let's take a look. He's going to be going for growth. This is going to be giving him three extra villagers and additional 50 food on the orchards. Now, just bear in mind as well, this does scale. So, for example, if he was in the feudal age and going to the castle age getting growth, that might give him, say, like five villagers or something. I can't remember the exact numbers, but it does scale quite nicely. On the other side of things, the Byzantines, let's talk a bit about them. Let's show them some love. I think it's going to be one of the most popular civilizations in Age of Empires 4 in the new DLC. I think the main eco bonus really is the sister, and you can see it there in action. And... I mean, what it does, I think this is at the heart of the Byzantines, really, their economy. The actual system itself uh, obviously costs resources, costs stone to construct. But once you do, it makes the villagers actually have a faster gathering rate. You can see it's 5% here, but every time you increase the water level, it increases by 5%, I believe. And you might be wondering, what's a water level? You see that little one on the top of that cistern? As you build up a network of cisterns and connect them with aqueducts, it actually increases that water level. It's incredibly strong when you get to level 5. And uh, another thing about them, each system can be toggled to a particular bonus. So Conscriptio is the one that this is chosen on for now. Increases the military production rate, depending again on the water level. The higher the water level, the more of a boosting you get. You can also choose Dialecticus, which increases the research rate. And last but not least, you've got Presidium, which reduces the building damage taken. It does have an ability activatable for villagers. It actually arms nearby villagers with stronger weapons and increases their armor by plus two for 30 seconds. It's actually really strong. Like, if you're being raided early on, it can really give your villagers a fighting chance. One other thing to talk about is the Grand Winery. That is the landmark that Valdemar has chosen today to go to the next stage. Again, it really feeds into the eco bonuses of the Byzantines, and it increases the olive oil that can be gathered from berry bushes and olive groves and the reason why this is critical you might be wondering what is olive oil and you'd be right for questioning that because it is a resource that no other civilization gets access to or could spend or anything like that but the byzantines do and they can spend it on mercenaries now you might be wondering what mercenaries are you talking about well the byzantines can build a mercenary house and this is really unique to the byzantines what it allows them to do is to choose from three different contracts now, these contracts, they are very, very special. What they do, give them access to different units. You can choose between the Eastern Mercenary contract, giving you the Keshik, the Ghulam, or the Tower Elephant. 
You can choose the Western Mercenary contract giving you the Longbowman, Lance Connector or the Streltsy. Or you could choose the Silk Road Mercenary contract giving you access to the Javelin Throwers, the Camel Riders and the Grenadiers. Now the thing is there are in tiers, so there are three tiers for each Mercenary contract. So tier 1 is Keshik, tier 2 is Gulam, which you have to pay an additional upgrade of the contract to have access to. And then tier 3 obviously Tower Elephant. And same holds for the rest of the other contract types. It looks like Vanamar are going to be opting for that second town centre and a nice spot on the Woodland and Gold. Going to be securing some key resources, which Beastie spots quite nicely. And he himself is going to go for a second town centre on the deer pack. Valdemar might just push the deer away just to make things a little bit more inefficient for Beastie QT. Now, I would like to just say a really big thank you for everyone who has been supporting the channel up to now. It's such a great help in uh, just helping me do the content creating that I want to do. You know, even if it's just liking the video, it makes such a huge difference. Or even just commenting your favorite emoji really helps with the algorithm. You won't believe actually how much of an impact that makes. Just checking the analytics is kind of crazy. But uh, a special, special thank you for all the YouTube members and also the Twitch subscribers. You guys are absolute legends going the extra mile when you didn't really necessarily have to. But you did it because you wanted to support. So I really appreciate that. And uh, hopefully it will help me create better content. I'm certainly looking to get feedback at all times. So if you have any feedback on my content, you think, oh, I could do this a bit better. Just drop a comment in the comment section below. Let me know. I mean, obviously, I tend to read all the comments. And I do my best to reply. And, uh, you know... If you have something that pops into your mind, just let me know. I, you know, I'll look at it. I'll have a think about it. If I think, yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. You know, I'll probably implement it. Uh, you know, I've done that in the past with lots of things on the on the channel, and I feel like a lot of the improvements have come from the comment sections below. In any case, let's take a look at what BCQT is opting to do. Looks like he's obviously playing that heavy feudal age now with the second stable. There is a unit that they have access to that it looks like he's training, and it is the Desert Raider, which is a very versatile cavalry unit, as it says on the tooltip. The reason why it's so versatile is that it can, it can actually switch between melee and ranged attack. One's just popped out. And you can see he's got the W and the Q. Can switch between the two attack modes. What I would say about the DLC, by the way, the Sultan's Ascend DLC, the visuals are absolutely phenomenal. I, I mean, whoever designed the units, the skins, is absolutely on point. Like, with all the factions, all the civilizations, we're just seeing the Desert Raider here today now, but... If you look at the other ones, like the Order of the Dragon there is so, so good. I mean, the Byzantines, the base building is a phenomenal. I mean, there's certain things that we might even see, like when the aqueducts are destroyed, the water actually trickles. Like, there's a leaking of water in the aqueduct. It's so, so cool to watch. The Manjanik, the Manganel equivalent for the Ayubids when it fires off the boulders. Incredible. The Kyra Siphon for the Byzantines, their version of the Ram with the Greek fire. Burning things alive. Absolutely great. Uh, I just can't wait. Hopefully we'll see a lot of that today in this uh, this match. You see Valdemar now just extending that aqueduct system. It already has level 2 on the cisterns. You can see that village of gathering rate was increased from 5% to 10%. Now that he is at level 2. You can see he's drafted in some longbows. So he went for the western military contract there, Valdemar. We'll have access to Lance Connector as well later on. And also Streltsy. Now I think it looks like... The Byzantines are going to be playing a little bit more passive, especially with the unit composition, right? Like longbows, they can't move very fast. Have to be strategically positioned to protect. Going to get a Palisade Wall here on the west side. I like this strategy in his play, but take a look at that, the walling. You can actually wall between the relics. It's something new, but he's not taking a chance, right? Because the relic will be picked up at some point, so Valdemar needs to be careful that that's not a way that he can uh, uh, be attacked from later on in the game. Speaking about being attacked, well, he is being attacked now. That house is going to be... Uh, torch down now you might be wondering why would you build a house there and it's actually something very unique to the byzantines let's take a look at his fog of war and what he can see valdemar he gets a lot of vision from the house and it's because the house of the byzantines actually give you an additional seven tiles line of sight it's so so powerful but there's that mercenary house already built now, I'm going to say as well, um, I will have a lot of build orders on the channel. I've been working hard on the build orders. And um, so if you play Age of Empires 4 and you're looking for that kind of content, it will be here. I'm going to delay that releasing a little bit because obviously you guys can't actually play the game just yet. The DLC actually comes out on the 14th, if I'm not mistaken. 
so I'll release all that content ready for you on the 14th. I'm hoping to get a build order for each faction, each civilization. At the moment, I already have a build order for the Ayubids, for the Zhushi Legacy, and also the Order of the Dragon. So I'm going to be hoping to make one for the Byzantines. Um, and, and I'm basically all of them. I think generally the good strategies I'll look to cover. They're very highly refined build orders. And I'll make it clear what level it's designed for. Because, you know, sometimes you need build orders dedicated for, like, intermediate players. Sometimes you need to get builders which are kind of dedicated to, say, players that have got a bit more um, ability, like with their, their APM, their actions per minute, can really kind of control units very well. And obviously they can have micro details to their build orders and amendments. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll target it at the level and I'll make sure it's very clear on the title of what level it's designed to. So do check it out if it's something you're interested in. It's something I used to do quite a lot uh, with the vanilla civilizations, the other civilizations. I've got lots of build orders for them on the channel. So if it's something you're excited about, just wait for that. That will be with you on the 14th, I suspect. But for now, I really want to enjoy and showcase the showcase showcasing games like this of the new civilizations. Both players pretty equal in village account, but Beast Cutie investing quite a lot in Palisade Walls wants to kind of get that protection up and uh, keep himself safe to play the mid to late game. Now, I think the Ayubids could be quite strong in the mid to late game. The question is, is it going to the next stage? It looks like it's kind of getting there almost. Let's just see. The thing is, is that there is a bit of a... A bug. So you can see, look, the Golden Horn Tower is being built by Val Valdemar. But look at this. Beastie's actually already on the way to the Castle Age. But we don't see it on the, uh, the 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 overlay. So it's kind of like, it's a bit tricky. You've got to keep an eye on it. It's going to go up with the Trade Wing, the Bazaar. And it's such a strong choice. I see a lot of players going for this. Every three minutes, a Trade Caravan arrives with uh, four favorable exchanges that you can choose from, whether it be units, resources. You can actually have access to two special units. The Bedouin Swordsman and the Bedouin... Radar, I think it is. I can't quite remember. Let's take a look. Now, the Skirmisher. Yeah, that's it. It's the Bedouin Skirmisher. But you can also get Villagers. So, uh, it's a really nice kind of eco boost that Beastie could choose from. Decide. Uh, he's going to go for Traders. Okay, okay, okay. Let's get the trade up and running in a little bit. I'm not so sure how much gold he'll get there. Not much. He might need to extend the trade. He is going to extend it. There we are. Getting a market in the corner. So, it looks like the IUB is going to be trading today as well. And a bit of raiding here in the southeast. Got to be careful here, Valdemar. It's pretty open. Well, I was going to be looking to burn through the aqueduct. I can see, look at the graphics. They're actually leaking water there on the aqueduct. It's going to go down and be crumbled to the ground, but you've got to love that attention to detail, right? Such a treat to watch. Now, I do see the longbows picking away at a camel desert raider, rather. Well, desert raiders do actually have camel on knees as well, because it is technically a camel unit. But they are pretty squishy to longbows and archer units, which is kind of a shame. And I think, I don't know, I think the Desert Raiders got very specific uses. I'm not entirely sure. It's a bit tricky one because, like, they can do decent damage against heavily armored units. Obviously, they counter horsemen and cavalry. They got bonus damage, 13, 13 damage against uh, cavalry as an additional. But they just seem to get absolutely squished um, from ranged attack. And it's kind of tricky, right? Because, like, the other counter for heavy cavalry would be spearmen. And so if an army composition of your opponent is... Um, like heavy cavalry, uh, ca cavalry related. So, for example, you're against the French. They're going knights. You want to go desert raid as well. The thing is, the French army composition is knights and archers, right? And sure, the spearmen are pretty, pretty squishy against archers as well. Um, it just feels a bit weird that the desert raiders are, are pretty squishy. They're just... Yeah, it, it's a tricky one, right? Because you've got to be not confused between the desert raiders and the camel lancers, as we can see there. It's actually quite difficult to spot the difference sometimes. But I think, yeah, there's only one Desert Raider there. The Camel Lancer is a really nice, unique unit for the IU bids. They have a tactical charge, kind of like the normal Lancers do and the Knights. And uh, something that the the Abbasid Dynasty don't get. You see uh, Valdemar looking to get another house with that line of sight and that vision. It does build very fast. Holy moly. Did you see that villager? What was she on? That was crazy. Wait. That builds super fast. That, that was less than 15 seconds, wasn't it? What was that about? All right, all right. Village on stars, I guess. Now we see the Banjanik. This is such a great unit for the Byzantines. The animation's incredible. Take a look at this. It can swap weapon to kinetic. Uh, switches to solid ammunition, which deals higher damage. But at the moment, it's on the incendiary ammunition. 
is so, so good. You get two incendiary attack, fire, but plus 14 versus building. And it's got 12 burst attack. Take a look at that. Holy smokes. The main thing is the burst attack, right? So if you think about it, it's two, but you've got 12 burst attack to go with it. Pushes away the villagers away from that wood line instantaneously. And it's such a great animation. you got to love it. I can't wait for great shots from the Manganix. If you thought Manganel shots were great, wait until you see these guys. All right, Sacred Sight being decapped in the middle. Who actually caught it? Looks like it was Valdemar trying to, but didn't manage it in the end. Oh, there was actually one other thing I wanted to mention as well. I do have a subscriber goal. I'm itching to maybe get up to about 10,000 subscribers. And I'm mentioning it now in the video because if you've watched until now, you're probably enjoying the content and you probably maybe watched a couple of videos. I have a rule of thumb. Like I'd say generally, if you've watched three of my videos and you've enjoyed it, I'd say, you know, it's probably a good time to subscribe because you don't want to miss the next one, right? I'll probably be releasing uh, videos very frequently uh, until the DLC comes out. And even then, uh, I, you know, I've been releasing videos maybe daily. And I think I'll try and continue that. But until the DLC actually gets released for you guys to be able to play, I'll be doing maybe two, three videos a day. So that's kind of uh, a lot of content heading your way. So you should be able to see a lot of the civilizations on show before you decide to maybe commit to buy it or maybe just enjoy watching, to be honest. Do you see the Tower of the Sultan? I absolutely love this unit, by the way. It's very expensive. It costs a thousand resources. It costs 650 wood and 350 gold. But uh, you get your you get your money's worth. Take a look at that. 600 ram siege damage. 200 plus that on top of that for walls. And it also is firing arrows. It's kind of strong. There are two Springles getting a couple of shots on it, but doesn't quite manage. It's going to snipe a Manjanik. Does get the Manjanik. That's actually quite critical because there's quite a decent number of spearmen here. The spearmen are going to be trying to protect the spearmen. Doesn't quite manage to get one under its protection. But he engages here. I'm not so sure about this one, Beastie. It's going to dive on the springles, but it's going to lose all his camels. And those crossbows on the back line are going to be picked apart by the longbowmen. This is not a good trade here for Beastie. Losing so much. The tower of the Sultan trying to push back a little bit. But there's only so much they can do. And the trouble is the ranged attack coming from Valdemar shouldn't really delete the uh, tower of the Sultan too quickly. But the thing is, it's got such a large mass and there's nothing to protect it that, well, Beast Kitty will have to back away. He is, uh, that thing's going to fire. That's going to explode. Oh yeah, it does explode pretty badly, by the way, guys. Take a look at this. You're going to love this one. Take a look. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Boom! There we go. Absolutely phenomenal. I love it. I've got to say, the animations... Have really, really improved in the new DLC. But now 53 military versus 26. Valdemar is in a good spot. I've got to say, Beastie does have the three sacred sites, but probably not for too long. I don't see that staying that way for too long. All right, villagers coming out to stone now. Maybe looking to get a keep of his own here, Valdemar. He is a bit behind on village account. And I, I think that's obviously because of the trade, right? The trade is working quite nicely for BC. Let's just take a look on that. Let's go a sneak peek. 16 traders at the moment. And a lot of it could just be coming from favorable trades, right? From the from the Grand Bazaar. But 61 military, that could pack a punch. Valdemar needs to do some damage, though, you feel. He's at the water level 4, which is actually going to be really boosting that economy. Let's take a look, actually. 20% the gather rate. I think the Byzantines could be a really strong late-game civilization. It has to be said, because like, that's going to increase, right? 25%? And, like, sure, the HRE get 40% with the prelate. And, to be fair, that's actually right from the beginning of the game. Yeah, you know what? I mean, the, the prelate's busted. Don't get me started on the HRE, all right? But, but just hear me out. Like, it, it's actually really nice because also it also increases the production speed, right, of the military buildings. Uh, I think now it'll probably be about... Let's just take a look, actually. How much faster are the production going to be? Well, tier 4 would be 80%. It's actually gone on Dialecticus, obviously supervising the blacksmith, increasing the rate of research. About to engage on the front line, but the Manchinic getting a hit or two. He's got to be careful here, Valdemar, not to overextend himself, get caught. He's going to need some anti-siege in the form of spring walls before he can take a meaningful engagement. Beastie, is that Beastie's walls? Yeah, Beastie looking, trying to get some stone walls up right across the middle of the map. 
Valdemar with the defensive keep for now. Right in front of his base. The food income looking pretty decent here for Beastie. Let's take a look at the rates of income. The gold looking so strong for Beastie. Take a look at that. That trade income is looking pretty menacing. I think Valdemar's got to be careful, right? Because if he develops a big bank of gold, Beastie will be looking in a good spot. Got to keep on the west. Got to be connecting that aqueduct with the aqueducts rather soon. Looking to get to that level 5 on the system network. Going to look to take down that uh, palisade wall, that gate, and then break through. And there it is. They're going to get the uh, water level 5 very soon. There we are. Does increase to 25% now. Giving you the full 100% production speed increase. And it's going to take the engagement spearmen. Well, I should say, uh, they're not actually spearmen, actually. They're Limitini. Limitini? Limitini? Yeah, I think it's pretty much limiting, but the Maginix might they they might they, they might deploy. It could be a big shot there. Oh, there's a lot of the longbows do go down, and they've actually switched from the incendiary attack to the regular attack. But he loses the the uh, the Maginic in the end, and not an overall great fight for Beastie. It was, yeah, this is not great. There's a couple of lands connected again, good value. Mostly crossbows remain. A couple of dervish, which is the religious unit for the IU bids. All things considered, Valdemar definitely happy with that engagement. And he's pushing back now. It looks like he's going to get a forward keep. Or is that Beastie's keep? I don't... Yeah, I mean... Wait. Is that foundation? It might be a deleted foundation. In any case, he's heading further forward. And Valdemar, he's reinforcing well. He's kind of getting the map position with the outpost as well. He's going to be trying to build on this momentum if he can. Now, as you guys know, Beastie QT is probably one of the best, if not the best player in Age of Empires 4. Valdemar is definitely up there. He's an up-and-coming rising star, I would say. Obviously, Drongo likes to call him the kid, but he's certainly proving himself today, and he has been for the last few months, and I can't wait to see what he does with the civilizations and whether they can contest, at least in the early stages of the uh, the pro players figuring out the civilizations. I wonder whether Valdemar could uh, start to make a name for himself. I mean, he already has, to be fair, but you know, he might just raise the bar a little bit, just a little bit more. The bar is certainly so high already, but... He's definitely got it, got it in him. Alright, well Beastie looking to get a keep here in the southeast. And he will actually manage it. It's nothing to really stop this. And I don't think Valdemar has vision here. He's going to protect a stone mine and also a gold vein. Beastie Cutie going up to the Imperial Age. We didn't spot that because we didn't actually realise it was happening, but it is what it is. Okay, he's gone up with the culture wing. Oh, he's taking the engagement. There is a, uh, a keep down the front line. Going to be denying that stone wall. Does lose a couple of siege units there, I'm afraid. And well, again, Beastie, he's, he's, he's running into problems, right? Because he's got the Viringian guards there. They're going to be heading further forward. Going to lose one more Manjanek and he's going to lose another and that's a big big take there by Valdemar he is really starting to punish Beastie and his positioning see the Varangian guards right on the front line basically their mana times equivalent though for the the Byzantines and they're tanking even against the crossbows I mean they do get taken out in the end but that's a lot of villagers and about to perish trying to build up the stone walls but the keep is up for Valdemar good staging ground to attack from and he is meaning business I mean he is not letting up here come the cavalry though from the IU beds. This could be dangerous for Valdemar, has to back off for now. Looks like Beastie wants to take this engagement. Oh, he does get a house for that vision. It just feels a bit awkward, right, seeing forward houses like that, but it makes total sense when you consider the vision it gives us. Does have a couple of crossbow. It's fighting underneath the keep though. Uh, that's less than ideal. We'll be looking to pick off reinforcements. Gonna try and snipe some of the siege. He will take one springboard at least, I think. Does take one, probably won't take another. Yeah, this is looking uh, really interesting for Valdemar. He's got two trebuchets to add into the war efforts. He has broken the aqueduct system, though. The cistern. He's got to build that up again. He's built it up back up to level 5. And all of a sudden, though, down to 17 military beasties. He's on the retreat. And has to head back home. A lot of olive oil in play for Valdemar. Might start to think about getting some Strelzy if he gets to the Imperial Agent. Upgrades the, the contract. He engages with the Limitanae. Focusing on the Camel Lancers. But a decent number of Camel Lancers. It doesn't really feel like 
They're going to totally overwhelm the good, nice meat shield for Valdemar. It does back off now, and so does Beastie. Beastie is not feeling it. He's not engaging. He doesn't want to. Don't blame him. He's quite far behind a military count. But he does have that buzzing economy, right? 151 eco units. 3,000 gold coming in per minute. More food than Valdemar coming in per minute as well. It's actually looking kind of crazy. Gonna send a couple of units. Gotta be careful because there are only Palisade walls here for Valdemar. Pretty open to raiding, but we might then just see this little upgrade, of course, that equips the villagers with weapons to help better protect themselves. Hopefully we see that. I haven't seen it today at all. There is a Bombard now added to the mix for the Ayubids. Now that he is in the Imperial Age. Valdemar, I mean, he's not that close to the Imperial Age himself. I might stress him out a little bit, but the Limitine going to be taking a decent engagement against the Camels. I don't think it's a fight that Beastie wants to take. I'm not so sure why he is. He's fighting underneath the keep. Probably feels like he, he can take the fight because he's at population cap, right? So he wants to trade, but this is not a good trade at all. Those Spearmen won't mind. Uh, I should say Limitine won't mind at all. He absolutely rips through the Camels. Look at the dead carcasses of the Ayubid Camels sent to their deaths. And it just feels like he doesn't have the greatest army composition here for Beastie. He's struggling. He's going to need to switch into something different. He does have the population space to do that now. He's trying to get a keep defensively. Oh, if Valdemar spots that, which he does, he might just look to be aggressive here. Will he look to try and deny the keep, or will he look to come back a little bit later with a couple of trebuchets? We'll have to see. He does have a couple of handed cannoneers here, Beastie. Looking to defend with that. Oh, looking to wall up Valdemar, but he's going to run into a bit of a surprise there. But take a look at the olive grove transition. Beautiful to see. Lots of olive oil coming in. Now, Valdemar going to go up to the next age with the Foreign Exchange Company landmark. It's such an interesting one for the Byzantines. What it does, if we can spot it, there it is, in all its glory. Enables them to get very specialized siege. They can get the Hui Hui Pao, they can get the cannon, and they can get Nesta Bees. If you thought the mercenaries were bad enough that they can get other civilization units, well... Yeah, well, take a look at the foreign exchange company, or the engineering company, I should say. But I do like that about the Byzantines. It's give them a little bit of a mixed identity. Speaking about identity, well, it's the same thing again. The camels riding into the Limitanai. Feels like it's on repeat, and those camels, they will perish quickly. Does have a couple of bomb bars, though. Dishing out some damage, that is for sure. Quite a few longbows. Yeah, this is a weird fight here for Beastie. Does have a couple of hand cannoneers. Valdemar, though, doesn't have all that much apart from longbows at this point. He's going to need to back away because there is cavalry coming in that position. They are looking to do damage themselves. He's got to be careful not to lose that trebuchet there, Valdemar. Quite a lot of siege on the field for Beastie. Doesn't have the nickname Beastie Kitty for nothing. Ooh, what's this? An outpost coming out for Beastie. Looking to protect that wood. I like that play because wood is starting to become a bit scarce, right? There's not a lot of wood available for both players, and looks like Beastie Kitty wants to take the wood he can. Whilst he can. Be careful, Valdemar. Might lose that keep. Three bombards. Does have a cannon of his own. He's got a lot of meat shield units in the Limitany. And they are at the elite upgrade. He's losing the bombards, I'm afraid. Beastie is lost one so far. Might lose another. The cannon looking strong. Takes out the Springlord first. The cannon does take out the... Uh, well, the Bombards do take out the cannon. Valdemar loses that siege unit, but I'm sure he'll get more. Now, the Limit and I are going to focus on the Bombard. Quite a few hand cannoneers behind them. They're going to need to retreat for now. Longbow is going to try and target them down as best as possible. Look at the Blacksmith upgrades. Pretty much almost there. Just the third ranged attack is missing. Valdemar a little bit further behind on that front. There's always orange dots here. We always have to keep an eye on things if there's any shenanigans, any funny business. It's starting to... Edge forward here a little bit, Valdemar. Looking to see what value you can get. Going to run into the keep, though. Probably won't be able to last too long underneath that. Take a look at that. Uses the arrow volley attack. I love that when it gets activated. Oh, a couple of units heading on the east side. The yeah, elite horsemen. Valdemar's got to be careful. Does pull those villagers away. Oh, there's a lot of villagers that could be... Oh, Beastie didn't spot them. There were villagers there, but they are going to get away. And there is a keep there to defend, but... This is looking a bit troublesome. It's going to go through pretty quickly. And we've also got Greek fire projectiles for now for the trebuchets for the Byzantines. So when they do fire, they will be Greek fire. It's 
Take a look at the damage it does. Take a look at those boulders. Holy smokes, they're coming in for the trebuchets. They look absolutely phenomenal. See him crashing against the keep. We should see another one come across. At any point now. Oh, okay. Maybe he's... Yeah, anyway. Maybe to be a bit further out for the animation. Maybe it loses the fire at the beginning of the animation. In any case, he might lose a trebuchet. Manages to survive with it. But he's getting raided from the south. That came out. They actually managed to get through there. That's unfortunate. Those villagers do need to equip themselves with military. You can see the elite limitany. Though they are going to pick them apart. So it's not the greatest raid there for Beastie. But he's getting value, right? There's 15 villagers that are idled. And he's getting some kills. Maybe not as much as he would want. He has killed 46 so far. That's a lot of villagers that have gone down. He's getting a second keep in that position to defend that wood. He recognizes that key strategic area of the map. Whilst the raid has been taken care of. Now Valdemar is going to push further forward. Does have 73 military, but a lot of it is back at home that just needed to defend. Take care of the rams. Now, with the gold trouble that Valdemar has, this game is looking pretty tricky, right? Look at that. Only 79 gold per minute coming in for Valdemar. Beastie, on the other hand, has 2,000. The keep is on fire. Looks like Valdemar will lose his position, which is less than ideal. The rams will go down. At least two or three of them will, but the keep is being trying to be repaired, but he won't have enough, I don't think. It's down to 80. Yeah, I think the next... Yeah, it goes down. I'm afraid. And the Rams did the work they needed to do. Trouble for Valdemar. He doesn't have any gold. And I think these two keeps in such a strong position, right? Denies the trade. He's stealing Valdemar's gold right from underneath his nose. And it's kind of crazy the value that the Byzantines are getting with just food and wood. Got longbows and limitany at this point. But he's uh, holding his own. He's going to lose another keep, though. Looking a bit tricky at this point. He needs to... Defend his key locations. The kind of crazy thing. I think Beastie's overboomed. Take a look at the resources. It's fully population capped. Something to bear in mind though. It doesn't necessarily matter. As long as he holds on, right? The only way that Valdemar wins is if he takes a really good push and an engagement. And Beastie's not able to replace the units. The issue is he's got plenty of resources to replace units. It's just a question of whether he has a production. Something that's a little bit dangerous though is if Valdemar attacks the front. And that, if that's where the production is... Then the ability to replace these units when they're lost really significantly diminishes. You're going to need to make sure he gets production builders at the back as well. Because that could be a problem, right? He might have the resources, but if he can't spend them, if he can't replenish his army quick enough, that could be a way that Valdemar has a win condition. Well, there's a lot of villagers here being harassed by the elite horsemen. Oh, that's bad. That's bad. That's super, super bad. Trying to get around. And he will survive for now. The Mitane coming on the other side, but it's got to be careful that horsemen don't circle around. Talking about being careful. Oh, there's a Magna popping out from the Siege Workshops. They're going to go down just as they pop out. And another one, and another one, and another one, and another one. The Maginet getting a huge shot on those ranged units. Valdemar in all sorts of trouble. But the Maginet, they spawn right where they probably would be the most vulnerable. And he's lost all of them. Okay, sure, he got one or two hits. But overall, definitely Valdemar will be happy with that. Another Maginet. Great micro there by Valdemar to stop that shot damaging the units. And coming in with the Elite Desert Raider, looking ominous. Does have a couple of hand cannoneers mixed and sprinkled in there. He's going to need them. Valdemar needs to back away for now. Miniature number's looking decent. It's got 50 units on the field now, Beastie. We've still got units there in the back. Elite Horseman. Almost, uh, I mean, he's got plenty of gold, right? Especially with the trade. In fact, let's just catch up on that in a second. Seven, 27 gold traders coming in there. Kind of crazy. Oh, now we do see the Cairo Siphon. We'll see the Greek Fire in action with those guys. I absolutely love that unit. They look great skins-wise. And boy, oh boy, did they do damage. There it is. The flames come out. Going to be burning the Palisades. But those Limitane are going to burn through those camels. And I think these Desert Raiders, they're just not looking good enough. They're getting ripped apart by the Limitane. And, well, this is the Cairo Siphon. Going to be working on the outpost very soon and burning it down. Now, this guy does so much damage. Look how quickly the outpost goes down. That's insane. This guy has 13 Greek fire damage, but the main thing is the 28 burst damage. Or burst attack, rather. It's kind of crazy. Again, Limitani, this time focusing on primarily elite horsemen. Limitani getting so much value, right? And the cannon in behind. Three cannons, in fact. Byzantines are spending their gold pretty much on the siege and everything else is being spent with food and wood, but it's it's winning the game so far. It's in a strong position. He's behind the villagers, but he's got a lot of map control in the middle now. Oh, but a couple of rams coming in. 
for Beastie. What is going on? Oh my god, Beastie. Going to try some shenanigans with these units coming out soon from the Siege Workshop. Maybe trying to get a Ram Rush. But the thing is, he's got a lot of melee units here, Valdemar. It's not like he's going for archers, right? The Limitane will do decently against them. Oh, two Mangenics. They might get a good shot off. Will they on the Limitane? We'll have to see. He takes it. Does he shoot? Fire, fire, fire. He takes a great shot. And another. And another. Now, all of a sudden, starting to be overwhelmed a little bit. But again, the limit and I still, I think they're getting good value. These guys are tanky as hell. Holy moly. The Manginix do take care of it in the end. But the trouble is, is the Cairo Siphon, right? BC's been so preoccupied dealing with the military. He hasn't been able to take out the siege. I do back off for now, though. I'll take a look at this. He's getting a keep in a really strong position. I'm not so sure that Beastie denies. <gasps> the Maginic, three of them. He's going to deploy Manganel. Maginic, oh, kills a lot of villagers. There are four now. He might get another shot. Valdemar's got to be careful. Oh, he lost them. The cannons. The cannons did the work. Oh, he switched over to the projectiles. But he loses it. The Maginic, they didn't do what they needed to do in the end. And four of them were just not enough. These cannons. They're just proving too strong. And now... The three Kyra Siphons going to be heading further forward. There is a keep to, to draw back to if he needs to there, Valdemar. Ayupid units being burned alive in the forest. And this is looking great for Valdemar. He's making strides, making inroads. Don't forget, Bistakiti hardly ever loses. So this will be a great scout for Valdemar if he gets the victory. Three cannons going to be making short work of that siege uh, workshop in the south. The rams are starting to break through with a couple of horsemen. Yeah, he's got to deal with this, right? Village is coming out for Valdemar. Did he use the ability of that? That's the question. He didn't, actually. That's unfortunate. He wasn't close enough to assist him, it seems. In any case, in the middle of the map, three cannons continue to deploy, take out key structures, and the great thing about the Limitani is countering almost everything. He's still going cavalry. It's not going to work. Not against the Limitani. Does have a couple of hand cannons in the back. That will help, but... Ah, this is looking dicey. Elite Limitani against cavalry doing so much work and on the back line the three cannons the three Cairo Siphon four Cairo Siphon burning things everything wooden going down Limitini coming in oh looks like the horsemen were going to try and wrap around and try and take out the siege didn't quite manage it in the end as we head into almost the 38th minute of the game BC is struggling he's struggling to keep up military production right he's got a lot of bank of resources takes out one cannon though that's a nice pick off does have quite a few spring needs to back away he does lose another there Beastie possibly with a way back in, but if the Springles go down to the Limitani, which they might just. His anti siege capabilities will take a big hit. Four Kyra Siphons continue to attack. Back at home, lots of attack notifications. I mean, he's getting raided, but overall, I think Valdemar is kind of okay with this. Like, all these cavalry, they are being pushed back by some Limitani. And all the cavalry that are there means that he's not going to be able to defend here, Byzantine. Uh, Beastie, rather. The Byzantines is where the action's coming in. It's burning those masks. And that is absolutely huge because there are four relics inside. That's a big chunk of gold income. But to be fair, with trade online for Beastie, gold shouldn't be a problem. He's uh, still on 27 traders. Kept it consistent and clear. Obviously, he's been population kept for quite some time. Back at home. Rams are still working. He's got to be careful here. He's got to find an answer to this. Like, he can't just keep losing production buildings. He doesn't have that much wood left. And Beastie taking this woodline on the east side. Going to be diving in. This is a big push from Beastie. Coming in with more rams and horsemen. And this is such a great diversion, right? Because Beastie was under attack back at home. He needed some break, space to breathe. And this is definitely going to give him some space. Village is coming out to repair the... Oh, okay. Too late. Three Manginix deploying on the keep. I mean, did a decent amount of damage. Should be able to get another shot out there. There we are. Looking absolutely beautiful. We'll see another. Okay, the animation is a little bit less flattering on closer up, but yeah, it is what it is. Oh, he switched, that's why. I think he might have switched to the uh, regular mode for the Manjanik. Okay, starting to tech into hand cannoneers. A couple of production builders do go down, but villagers are committing now for Valdemar. Again, 84 military. Two villages going to take out that ram, but it's going to take a while. Might lose that whole group of eight olive groves if he's not careful. Going to start to move further forward with the Limitany. Maybe looking to just uh, protect that keep. I don't think he will be able to, though. Yeah, the Manginic take it out in the end. What a way to go down, though. Totally in flames. He 
He's managed to wall up, which is going to give him a little bit more time from the next attack wave coming in. Which might be soon. Actually, maybe not, because BC is population capped. It's kind of crazy when you think about it, right? I mean, I don't know if it's a bug with the overlay, but uh, I think it's the siege, right? It might be the siege, it might be the trader. Something's not being counted. 148 plus 19 doesn't make 200 the last time I checked. Oh, Manchnik. Got a bit of units there. The HP off them. Does get another shot off. Oh, that's absolutely huge. Actually, wasn't that bad. Can you believe that? I thought it was going to be a lot worse. Instead, Valdemar, he's going to take out those three Manchinik. And we thought it was going to be bad for Valdemar. Well, at least I did for a second, but it wasn't. If anything, it was the other way around. Keep looking to go up. It probably will. The Cairo Siphons might have something to say about that. Take it down. Burn it to the ground, I say. And the Mitane heading further forward. And BC struggling. He's down to 23 military versus 87. And all of a sudden, that keep goes down, or at least it's deleted. And the Cairo Siphons on the back are going to be burning houses. And, well, this is a big, big fight here. This could be what decides the game outcome. He's going to lose a lot of siege. Those are like seven springles that BC's going to lose in the blink of an eye. He can't do anything about it. Magic deploys, gets a shot off. But I'm not so sure it's going to be enough. That's a lot of gold investment going down. The camels will take out the Cairo Siphons if they get their way. But there are a couple of hand cannons. There is a nest of bees. And there are reinforcements coming in for Valdemar. He's looking super strong. He's going to look to take down that second keep. And if he does, it's going to be very difficult to defend this position for Beastie. He is struggling. Down to 12 military, finding it very difficult to replace. And this is not looking great. I mean, a lot of his military is down in the south, but he's trying to raid as best he can. But it's not meaningful damage, right? It's not like a sustained push. Definitely not like how Valdemar is pushing hard. And if he takes down that keep, that would be problematic. Take a look at that. The burning Greek fire on the grounds, on the foundations of the keep. He's burning it to the ground, quite literally. But the Ecos and Tatas, 34 idle villagers, and that kind of makes up the difference that they have in village account. And don't forget, there are only two landmarks that Ayub is just typically similar to the Abbasid dynasty. The Kyra Siphon going to start to work on that, burning the House of Wisdom down. Does have a couple of trades he can get. You can see those four traders. Maybe we'll look to get some military, right? Could be an option for him. We'll have to see. In any case, he's got to do something fast, right? 79 military versus 10. I think this could be the end. This could be the curtains. Beastie struggling to stay afloat, struggling to produce units, struggling to mount a sustainable push back. There are three Manganels, or Manginix, I should say, but they are being poked and prodded, and the Limited Knight jumping right on top of them, and that's a lot of siege to go down for free. This one doesn't even deploy. Could have got an option to attack, but he didn't, and he loses it pretty much for free. And unfortunately, with that House of Wisdom going to be burnt down, here come some units for BCQT. Maybe the last stand that he has... Trying to get the Bedouin skirmishers out of there. Stop them from being burnt alive. And it looks like he's going to be fighting on the back lines. Maybe look to try and get as much of a sustained army as he can to take one big fight. There we are. We see a lot of those elite desert raiders. But this is looking bad, ladies and gents. The next thing is going to be the town centre. The House of Wisdom is going to be burnt down. As we can see, the Cairo Siphon doing fantastic work with the Greek fire. It does go down. Next is Oli, the town centre. The torch damage is coming out from the Limitane and... Valdemar has played this absolutely fantastically on Dry Arabia to take up Beastie QT, arguably one of the best players in Age of Empires for Valdemar making a name for himself in the Sultan's Ascent DLC. Hope you guys enjoyed the game, and if you did, do give the video a thumbs up. More importantly, if you'd love to see more content covering the new civilizations, make sure you click the end card on your screen right now.